Today, we're going to go into Ephesians now, chapter 2. We're finally done with chapter 1, and now we're going into Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm going to be talking about, are you dead to sin? Everyone say dead. dead. Are you dead to sin? And we're going to take a look at a topic that a lot of ministers don't want to talk about because you're going to offend some people. When you start talking about sin, you start bringing offense. But it's not you that's bringing the offense. It's the Word of God. So if the Word of God offends you, then you need to either change your lifestyle or change your name. What do you mean change your name? You you ain't a Christian if the Word of God offends you. Don't call yourself Christ-like if the Word of God offends you. Come on, somebody. We ju- this is just the start. I haven't even offended nobody, y'all. Already. Yeah. Give me the blue eyes. And like, oh, Pastor, you start talking about sin, you're messing around again. Amen. Yeah, try. The batteries don't want to talk about sin. Amen. (laughs) They're like, no, don't talk about sin. See, people don't want to come to church to hear about sin. They want to come and feel good about themselves and hear topics like how to be blessed. And, you know, they want feel good message. They want you to tickle their ears, scratch their back, massage their feet. Some of y'all said, that don't sound too bad. <laughs> Let me get my husband or wife to do that. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with those messages. But you cannot avoid the topic of sin. See, many ministers won't preach about sin anymore because they're on television. Or they have a big audience. And they're going to lose out their television contract. They're going to lose out their audience on Facebook or, or TikTok or wherever the case may be. So all they concentrate on is the feel-good Ronald McDonald Happy Meal message. Here's your cheeseburger and fry and go home and smile and feel good. But we're not going to touch the topic of sin. If that's the type of church that you want to go to, probably Dunamis Life Church is not the church for you because we're going to preach the whole Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. And if it offends you, then so be it because Jesus says the Word of God is offensive to those who don't believe. You see, the Word only offends sinners. That's all it offends. Because if you're living right, guess what? The Word of God is going to confirm you. It's not going to offend you. We might have to go back to the balcony again. See, there are many speakers, many ministers, many pastors afraid to call sin, sin, because people are going to leave their church. Oh, I don't want to be a part of that church. They're they talking about sin again, making me feel bad for going out last night. Amen. Nobody here. I know. I know. They're making me feel bad for doing this or that. It's not me. It's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And we're not talking about your outward appearance. I'm not talking about what you're wearing. That's not what sin is about. You know, well, because remember back in the day, if a woman came to church uh, without a dress, they were sinful. Remember that? How many of you guys remember that legalism days? Amen. And some of the women got set free, and they're they coming in past. They said, amen, pastor. I got that revelation quick. I ain't got to come in no, you know, dress all the time. And there's nothing wrong. You want to come in a dress? Praise the Lord. 
But guess what? You still can sin and have the longest dress that there ever was, and you're still a sinner. So it's not the clothing. It's not what Jesus said was on the outward that makes you a sinner. It's what's coming from the inside out. Because you could be beautiful on the outside, but dirt ugly on the inside. How many ever met someone like that? Don't look at your neighbor. <laughs> they is beautiful or good looking, you know, as can be on the outside. But man, they show sure is ugly on the inside. And some of us, we get blinded by the outside. Oh, they got money. They got a car. Oh, you know, they have a Mustang, a Corvette. Oh, I look good in a Corvette, Pastor. You should see me with my hair blowing and... But he's a bum. He's gangbang. He sells drugs. But pastor, I look good in the vet. He doesn't want to work. You're going to regret marrying that guy. You know how many times I've had counseling sessions and, and, and share with people, hey, you know what? There's red flags all over the place. And, he, and instead of them saying, okay, yeah, red flags, let me stop this. They, they're out there waving the flags. Woo! <laughs> and then sometimes within a few months, they come coming back in the office. Oh, Pastor, he's a bum. All he does is play video games and lays on the couch. He don't want to work. Well, you knew that. Marrying him, did he have a job? No. Did he even want to work? No. What was he doing? Laying on the couch playing video games, but he looked good. <laughs> See, you can't go blind into sin. God is always going to give you the flags. Hey, stop. Someone might call you on the phone right before you're about to sin. Has that ever happened to somebody? You don't have to raise your hand. You're, you're about to do something you know you shouldn't do, and all of a sudden, one of your friends call you, you're like, oh, dang it. Come on now, be real. And they're like, hey, just call and you see what you're doing. See, that's the Holy Spirit giving you the sign. Stop before you go any further. And what do we do a lot of times? Oh, no, I'm just chilling alone by myself. I'm just going to stay in tonight. Oh, okay, bye. And you already got your clothes on, ready to go. And we avoid the danger signs, the warning signs. Imagine you did that in a car. You saw a sign that said, bridge out. And you said, ah, that's for other people. Let me just floor it here. Think I'm the Duke boys or something. I'm going to jump this bridge. It ain't going to hurt me. Guess what? You're going to crash and destroy your car. See, God is going to give you warning signs. Stop. Danger. Don't go any further. Don't go out. You know how many young people I've, I've talked to over the years in the school systems when I did um, truancy and gang intervention that just by seconds they walked away and they're alive, and their friend got shot and killed. They're like, if I was only there for three more seconds, it would have been me. And in those moments that we share with them, or I at least share with them, I say, you know what? That's God protecting you. You need to get out of this lifestyle. God's giving you another chance. Don't waste it. Or even driving, you know. There might be an accident and, and God told you to slow down or take another route and then you found out there was an accident and that could have been you. The enemy was trying to take you out, but God says, I'm going to tell you to go another way so that you can avoid that accident. That's happened to me many times. I saw accidents in front of me. I remember one time on the expressway. I don't remember... Uh, if Yoli remembers, I think she was with me, and I think Dai was in front of us, or so another car was in front of us, and it was on 
Highway 55 right here. And right in front of us, the car swerves and hits the wall and begins to flip. And it happens like in a slow motion movie. Has that ever happened to you? Like you seem like you felt like you're in this slow motion movie when you're about an accident's about to happen. And I'm seeing it. And this car is flying in the air like a movie. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, Lord, you got to protect, protect us because there's no way out of this. That car is going to hit us. And I don't know how it happened, how it came about, but the car was able to move to a side in the air somehow and missed us and crashed into the wall back on the side again. That was only the hand of God protecting the people of God. Someone praise the Lord for that. I couldn't believe it, man. My heart was pounding. I got saved like 10 times right there. <laughs> I said, Lord, please forgive me for stealing that stick of gum when I was four. I didn't mean it. I took it out of my mom's purse. She never knew. Because <laughs> how many of you know, man, mothers always have stuff in their purse. <laughs> You're like, you need something. It's like a never-ending thing. You, you can find it in your mom's purse. See, that's why we need to preach the whole gospel. People need to know they're sinners. And they need Jesus to forgive them of their sins and then set them free from the curse of sin. People need to know. The Bible says we're all sinners saved by grace. So that means the moment we came onto this earth, we were formed in our mother's womb, we were already a sinner. You're like, well, I didn't do anything, man. I was just in my mama's womb chilling. Well, you became a sinner because your great, 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 great grandfather, Adam, sin into this world with Adam and Eve. They, they brought that sin, the curse of sin. So as soon as you were conceived, you were conceived a sinner in need of a Savior. See, you never know you need a Savior until you understand you're a sinner in need of a Savior. And that there's a curse called the curse of sin. Sin and death. Because sin pays with death. And then you get eternal life in hell. God doesn't play with sinners. And so you got to understand there's a curse that needs to be broken over your life. And that's only broken through the acceptance of Jesus Christ. When you accept Jesus Christ and you get covered by the blood of Jesus, that sets you free from the curse of sin and death. Remember, there was a picture of that in the Old Testament. When the death angel came, how many remember the story of the ten plagues of Egypt? And the death angel came, and God spoke to Moses and told the people to do what? Put the blood over the what? The door, the doorway. Because that's an entrance, a portal. And there's two things that can enter in through a portal. Life. Or death. See, how many of us here in our portals, we're allowing death to enter in? Death is coming our way. Because we don't have the blood of the lamb. Because remember, he said, put, kill the lamb and then spread the blood over the portal. Because a doorway allows you to enter into a new place. A new dimension, a new realm. You were on the outside, cold and freezing, and now you come in through the door of your house 
you're nice and warm and protected because the house is a place of protection. We feel safe in our houses. We feel safe in our home when things are going wrong and, and we go out and we always know that when we go back home, there's always that, that knowledge that we're safe in our home. And what brings violation to our home is when you get robbed. Then all of a sudden you don't feel safe anymore because somebody has violated your safety zone. And then you start putting alarms and cameras and, and you buy Smith and & Wessons and protect your house. Because there was an, an intruder that entered your home illegally. And you say the next time an intruder comes is going to be the last time that he walks. Amen. <laughs> because he's going to leave with a five-fold ministry or he's going to leave full of lead. Amen. <laughs> he's going to be like a magnet. Boom. <laughs> because why? Your home was intruded upon. Your safety net was no, is no longer safe anymore. But how many of us, the enemy has come in through our portal, through our door, and he's violated our safety of ourselves, of our body, of our soul, and we don't get upset. We don't get angry. We don't get out there and say, in the name of Jesus, you got to go, devil. You got to go, depression. You got to go, cancer. You got to go, anxiety. You got to go, sickness. You got to go in the name of Jesus Christ because you don't belong in here. You're an intruder into the body of Jesus Christ. This is my home. See, some of you get more upset that people mess with your natural home than when someone messes with your spiritual home. Some of you are ready to fight when someone gives your child a mean look. I've seen some of your mamas. <laughs> Did you just look at my child like that? That's it. Start getting the wax on and Vaseline and and, you're, and the kid's like, Mama, you in Walmart, you're going to fight her? Yeah, I'm going to fight her. Come on, man, I've seen it. <laughs> and you're ready to fight just from a dirty look. Don't you look at my child like that. Your child all ugly. <laughs> Come on, I, I've heard it all. You go to Walmart, just sit down for a little bit. Like, I let Yoli shop in Walmart, and I sit down on the bench. Man, I see some things that, oh, my God. I'm like, Lord, how can I get this out of my mind? <laughs> you see the craziest things at a Walmart if you sit down long enough and watch people walk out. You see everything. You see the depravity of human nature. And so you get upset because they look at your child funny, but the devil is stealing your family, got your child all up on drugs, and you are getting upset. You aren't going and say, okay, we're going to battle, devil, because that child belongs to the Lord. He doesn't belong to you. He's going to come home to Jesus Christ because the Bible says, for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. So you're about to get a ghetto beat down, devil. You either leave now or you're going to leave limping. I'm going to give you a choice. You leave them alone now or you're going to leave limping. See, we got to get upset with sin. Sin cannot be your friend. It's like there's this story of this lady who had this boa snake. 
And she took him to the doctors and said, hey, this boa hasn't eaten anything in like three weeks. And the snake keeps like just staying there looking at me, but won't eat. And the doctor said, or the veterinarian said, you better get rid of that snake. Because what that snake is doing, it's sizing you up. Because it's about ready to eat you. It's about to swallow you. And so it's preparing itself for you. And how many of us have like that boa, that sin in our lives, and instead of getting rid of it, we're like, we can handle it. We just keep it right here. And it's looking at us, and it's sizing us up, and it's just waiting for the moment that it has time to attack. And once it does, bam. And then we're like, how did we fall? It's because you kept it around like a pet. I know. Come on, balcony, help me out. See, some of us, we don't want to stop sinning. We want the good things of God, but we don't want to stop sinning. <laughs> Well, we're, we're coming in. We're coming in. See, Jesus took the curse of sin and death on the cross, and he won the victory for us so that we wouldn't have to suffer the consequences of sin. See, there's other curses we have to break after salvation, but Jesus broke the curse of death and sin on the cross. And all we got to do is receive the blood of Jesus, cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ, and then sin no longer has control over our lives. But when you open the door, it's going to come in. It's going to come in. So you never accept Jesus' free gift of eternal life until you realize you're a sinner in need of saving. See, no one comes to Jesus unless they realize they're a sinner. And what do we like to do? We like to rationalize. Well, at least I'm not a murderer. That's a worse sinner. Well, when it comes to sin in the eyes of God, for salvation purposes, sin is sin. Now, there's going to be different levels in hell for different levels of sinners. Some sinners are going to be in some, some deep levels of hell, suffering worse than others. That's not, we're not going to get into that today. That's, totally, that's a whole other topic. But for the purpose of salvation, God looks at sin all the same. So you can't compare yourself to someone else and say, well, they need the Savior more than I do. No, they need it just as bad as you do. Because if you don't have Jesus Christ and your doorpost of your house, your spiritual home, because what does the Bible say? That we're the temple, the home of the Holy Spirit. And the temple, the Spirit dwells in us. So we're a dwelling place. That's that's what a home is, a dwelling place, a place where something can dwell in. And if the Spirit of God cannot dwell in you because there's so much sin, then you need to do one or two things. You need to kick all that sin out, remodel the home, put the blood on there, repent of your sins, metaneo. Remember that word, that, that Greek word means 180, means to think of sin differently now. Now instead of the way you thought about sin, you think about it the way Jesus thinks about sin. That's metaneo. That's true repentance. See, we're not here to scare hell out of you. We're not, we're not here to do no tactics. Because people who are frightened into heaven will soon leave once the fear go, goes away. 
We're here to give you the knowledge of the Spirit so that you're on solid foundation. We're not using tactics to bring you into heaven. So you need to understand, you need to get rid of the sin, or you need to stop faking that you're a Christian. Amen? Amen. Because you're giving the real Christians a bad name. Because the world is associating anyone who calls himself a Christian, the fake ones, with the real ones. Everything else, they'll say it's fake. Like, you give them a counterfeit $100 bill, they'll say, oh, that's fake. They never associate a counterfeit $100 bill with the real one. But a fake Christian, they'll associate it with the real one. Why? Because they want to destroy Christianity. So if you want to be fake, then just go live your life. And we pray that the grace of God will be upon you until you're ready to serve him for real. But don't play. Don't play church. If you're going to be in church, then be in church. Then serve God. Then live a holy life. Then live for God. That doesn't mean you're not going to make an error and you're not going to make a mistake and you're not going to fall down. The Bible says a righteous person falls down seven times. But guess what? He doesn't stay down. He gets back up again. He wipes himself off and he repents of his sin and he cries out to the Lord and says, I don't want to do that anymore, God. I want to live for you. Holy and righteous. And like I said, it's not at the external what makes you holy. It's what's on the inside. We're not here as a legalistic church looking at you and saying, okay, you know, the, the skirt is too short, you're not a Christian. Or you're wearing a hat to church, you're not a Christian. We're not into legalism. We're here in the spirit. And we want to put you through the spiritual x-ray and see what's inside of you. Because what's on the inside is going to be produced on the outside. See, if you think you're all good, you'll continue to live your life with no fear of consequences of sin. And you won't want to live for Jesus. See, these people say, oh, there's no heaven, there's no hell. I just live my life and, and, and I die. So they have no fear. They have no fear that there's a judgment coming. One day, all of us will stand before Christ and we will have to make atonement for our sin. And either Christ is going to be our advocate or he's going to be our convictor. Who is Christ going to be for you? And how you find out is how you live here on this earth. And there's no guessing, well, I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. No. If you don't know if you're going to make it, then you're not going to make it. Because when you have Christ living in you, there is no doubt. Because the joy of the Lord is flowing out of you. You feel love for God. You're in the house of the Lord. You're going out doing the work of the ministry. You're going out saving the lost, healing the sick, casting out spirits. You're doing what God has called us to do. There is no doubt and no uh, wondering, am I going to make it? This is not a guessing game. This is for certainty. You'll know if you're saved or not. If you don't know, then today we'll make sure you know. Because this is not a game. I'm here to tell you, we're all sinners. We were all sinners, and we were all saved by the grace of God, and we all need Jesus. I need Jesus just like you need Jesus. There's not one person on this earth that can going to make it to heaven that doesn't accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. There's no back door. 
There's no secret entrance. There's no paying your way in. There's no saying, well, I was a good person. The Bible says there's not one good person that lives on this earth. No, not one. The Bible says your best deed on your best day is like a filthy rag to the Lord. So you're not getting in because you say you're good. The Bible says none of us are good. We're all evil. See, people don't like to hear that. Because, oh, that, that's offensive, Pastor. Well, that's what the Word of God says. You're evil. I was evil. Until the day I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and I repented of my sins and I turned my ways. Now, does that mean I'm perfect? No. I mess up every once in a while. <laughs> I mess up. I mess up. But I go to the Lord and I repent. So just like David, if you read the story of David, David really messed up all the time. But God called him a man after his own heart. Why? Because every time he messed up and every time he was confronted, you know what he did? He didn't make excuses. He didn't say, well, it's because you gave me this woman. He didn't say that. Oh, it's because, you know, my friends, they were peer pressuring me. No, he didn't say that. Oh, it was because, man, this beautiful woman was bathing outside and, you know, I had to take a double look. He didn't say that. Every time David was confronted with his sin, he fell on his face and he repented of his sin. And he asked for forgiveness. Now, there are consequences to the sin. Don't, just because you ask for forgiveness don't mean there's no consequences. See, some people think, well, God forgave me. There should be no consequences. No, there's consequences. You kill somebody, God's going to forgive you. But guess what? The laws of the land says there's consequences. You got to pay your consequence. So don't think you're getting out of consequences just because you ask for forgiveness. Now, can God do a miracle? Yeah, God can do anything. But there's consequences to your sin. See, don't let the enemy deceive you into thinking you're okay without Jesus. Whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, here in the sanctuary, you're not okay without Jesus. You're sick. I was sick. I had a disease called sin. But the cure was Jesus Christ. And one day, I remember that day when I fully accepted Jesus Christ at my pastor's house outside at a picnic. When I truly repented and said, from this day forth, I'm not going to mess around anymore. I'm going to serve God. It was in the month of August, right before school started, like a week before school started. And I said, I ain't messing around, God. I want to be serious with you. And I repented. And I knew I wasn't okay until I repented. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon me that day. And you see, the day you realize you're not okay, just because you have money don't mean you're okay. Just because you have good health don't mean you're okay. Just because you have a great job don't mean you're okay. Just because you have a brand new car doesn't mean you're okay. Just because your marriage is the greatest in the world doesn't mean you're okay. Because all that matters to God is have you repented of your sins? And if you repented of your sins, and you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, then you're okay to have access to everything that God has for you, which includes heaven. See, I don't serve God just because I'm going to heaven. Because, you know, that's, that's there. I serve God because I love him. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Is there someone here that loves the Lord? 
whether there was a heaven or a hell at the end of the road, wouldn't matter to me. I serve God because I love him. Heaven is just a bonus. See, if you serve God, well, I'm just going to serve God because I, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Well, then your mind frame is all wrong. Your mind frame is messed up. The enemy's going to get you because he's going to distract you from heaven because some of you might live to be 80, 90 years old and you lose distraction about heaven because now it's so far away. See, I serve God because I love him with that agape love. I don't love him because. See, remember agape, that Greek word for love, the highest form of love, means you love, period. I don't love you because you make food for me. I don't love you because you do this for me. I don't love you because this. No. Agape says, I love you, period. See, that's a lot of problems that a lot of believers have. They love God because they, just, they want to go to heaven. And that's their main reason for serving God. But once they lose focus of heaven, they start veering away from church. And they start veering away from God. Because their focus wasn't on who it should have been, God. The creator of the heavens. See, you're loving a creation instead of a creator. You can never love creation more than, a crea than the creator. You got to put your focus where it needs to be. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2 now. That was just the intro. Amen. <laughs> We probably won't get through all of this today, but we'll get through some of it. Because we, we, we got to understand sin, because sin is not being preached about. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, it says, As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and what? And sins. See, I, I'm just following the book of Ephesians, what it's talking about. So you're like, man, I came on the wrong week. Well, you should have read your Bible. You would have known. <laughs> I already told you we're going through the book of Ephesians and this verse 1 here. So God wanted you here for a reason. Now, Paul is the writer of the book of Ephesians. And he's talking to the believing church of Ephesus. That's why it's called Ephesians. There was a city called Ephesus. And they were known as Ephesians. You know, the, they were the Ephesian people. Just like, you know, there's the city of Chicago, and we're known as Chicagoans. You know, people say, you got that Chicagoan accent, or you like that Chicagoan food? And, you know, I say, yes, I do. I love Chicago's food. No better food in no other city but Chicago. Amen? <laughs> got the best pizza. Got the best everything. And those of you who live in other cities, too bad for you. You should have lived in Chicago. <laughs> Paul's talking to the believing church of Ephesus. So we're talking to believers here. What he's talking about right now, he's not talking to sinners. He's talking to the believing church of Ephesians. Just like I'm talking to the believing church of Dunamis, Paul's talking to the believers of the Ephesian church. So this is, he's talking about sin to believers. Why do you think that? Because there's sin in the camp. Anywhere there's people, there are people that are going to be playing the game. So just because you're in church doesn't mean you're a Christian. Amen. Just any less than you being in a car makes you, a, you being in a garage makes you a car. Just because you come to church don't mean you're a believer. Don't mean you're a, a, a person who loves God. You might have been forced to come. You might have been dragged to come. Some of you, like when I was little, you might have been pulled by the ear to come to church. 
and you're just here. Some of you might be guilty, feel guilty, and you come to church. We don't know your story. But just because you're in church doesn't mean you believe God, that you serve God. But there's no better place to be. I'd rather you be here not serving God than you be in a club not serving God. At least here we can do something for you. Club, all he's going to do is take your money and get you drunk. And, and, and people laugh at you because you can't dance. Amen. Some of you are like, no, I can dance. See, you just told on yourself. <laughs> You're like, let me go back to the day, man. Let me pop lock up in here. Some of these young people don't even know what pop locking is. They're like, what is that? That's back in the 80s, baby. Back when we, all we needed was a cardboard box. A, a piece of floor, and we, we got into it. How many of you guys remember that cardboard box and the floor? <laughs> I was back in the 80s, man. That's all, that's all you needed to dance. You didn't need no dance floor. You, you, you had a portable one anywhere you went, as long as you had a cardboard box. Paul's saying to the church, and this is the believers, he's saying we got to be dead to our transgressions and sins. So he's talking to the church, telling them, hey, wake up, church. You got to be dead to transgressions and sins. So that was running in the church. People were sitting. People were full of transgressions. And we're going to talk about those words. What do they mean? Probably not today, but we're going to get into it. Now, Paul is saying, that we should be dead to our transgressions and sins is the same word they used to describe Jesus when he was on the cross and he died. When you hear the word dead, that word dead is the exact same Greek word used to describe Jesus when he was on the cross and he died. So this is serious talk. This is not you know, every once in a while, because they said that Jesus was dead. No hope of life in him. That's why, remember, they stuck the spear in his side to confirm that he was completely dead. And the Bible says water and blood came out. And that's a whole nother sermon about the start of the church, the birth of the church with that spear that went in. But that's a whole nother sermon there. But they were doing it. They thought they were just doing it to confirm he was dead, which he was. So that same word that they said Jesus is now dead is the same word Paul is using to describe how we need to be in our lives with sin and transgression. Now the word dead in the Greek means this, lifeless. A corpse, not able to respond to impulses. Ooh-wee. Not able to respond to impulses. See, how many of us have impulses that right away we respond to? Nobody, right? Amen. You have an impulse. Man, I, I, I feel like I just got to do this drug. And it's an impulse in you. And guess what? Instead of you fighting it off, you give up and you respond to your impulse. Oh, I got this call. Late night call. Back in the day, we would say, I got this beep. When we had beepers, amen. Oh, yeah, I know this beep. <laughs> y'all don't y'all acting like you've been saved all your life y'all just leaving me hanging right here you got that beep on your smart beeper I remember that $1.99 a month smart beep <laughs> kids have no clue what beepers are 
that was the, you were the thing if you had a smart beeper back in the day. Then you paid two ninety nine to have the voicemail added to it. <laughs> so you got that beep from that girl or that guy. And you're like, oh, yeah, it's on and popping. <laughs> Impulse. Impulse. You all of a sudden respond right away. Whatever the case is of your impulse of sin, the enemy's going to send you those impulses. He's going to give you a call. Hey, man, let's go out and hang out, man, like the old days. Let's go, man. I got you, man. Everything's on me today. And you're like, oh, that's Jesus because he's never paid before. I'm going to go hang out. Let's go. Come pick me up. Come swoop me up. Impulse. How many of us have impulses that we respond to right away? Food can be an impulse. How many of you got, man, I just taste that chocolate shake from Portillo's. Oh. And you got that impulse. And, it's, and you know you're not supposed to be eating that late at night because you're lactose intolerant. <laughs> but you have that impulse. You're like, I'll suffer for Jesus. <laughs> and there you are going out late at night getting you a, a milkshake, knowing that it's bad for you. That you shouldn't be drinking those things at that time. Or you got an impulse for some sort of food. You know, pregnant women, they're, they're, they're great at impulses. Amen. I'm sure Pete's probably got some of those late night runs now. I remember Yoli, she would have an impulse at 3 in the morning. She would like hit me. Boom! Are you asleep? I was. <laughs> Do you hit me? She says, man, I just got a taste for a Big Mac. I was like, it's 3 in the morning. I rebuke that Big Mac in Jesus' name. She's like, no, go get me a Big Mac. I think, I think that's what's with, <laughs> with Elise. That's why she eats like three Big Macs now. <laughs> she had Big Macs in the belly before she even came out. And you have impulses for food. And you just want to go right away and fulfill your cravings. See, our flesh has impulse cravings to do wrong, never to do right. I've never seen someone wake up in the morning at 3 in the morning and say, you know what? I just got this impulse to go out to the streets and evangelize. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> If that's you, well, praise the Lord, you holy. <laughs> but I have yet for someone to tell me that story, Pastor, my, my wife or my husband has this impulses to go out there and, and preach the gospel at 3 in the morning. You know, people say, you know, how do I know it's my flesh? And it, or it's me or it's God. Well, believe me. It's never going to be your flesh to want to go out and do something for God. It's always going to be the Spirit of the Lord telling you. It's not in your innate nature, your human nature, to go out and evangelize. That's why on Fridays we're, we're doing that. We're praying, we're preaching, we're prophesying, and we're doing deliverance every Friday night. But it's not in us. We have to set it aside and say, okay, guys, come on, let's do it. And then we got to, you know, get the problem people like, like burros. Let's go, vamonos. <laughs> because it's not in our nature to want to evangelize. We're afraid. Sometimes we're shy. We've never done it before. So the word dead means not able to respond to impulses. See, we can't allow our impulses to control us. That's why our flesh has to die. That's why Paul says, I decrease so that Christ may increase in my life. 
See, your flesh has to die. Every day, it's a fight. It's a struggle. It's not easy to kill your flesh. You can't just kill it once because it comes back. They're like weeds. Man, I got these weeds sometimes at my house. Not sometimes. They're still there. Man, I, I poured weed killer. They ate it like it was soup to them, man. They were... Didn't kill them. I, I tried every weed killer at Home Depot and, and never killed them. I said, you know, all right, I got you now. I'm going to get some gas. I was upset. I poured gas on them. It was like candy for them. They didn't die. I was like, man, what are you made out of, demons? These weeds did not want to die. See, I didn't have to plant the weeds. The weeds just were there. You want flowers, guess what? You got to go buy them, plant them, take care of them, water them, love them, talk to them. Look crazy. You're like talking to a plant. Hey, how you doing today? Oh, you look so cute. <laughs> and you got to work hard to have a garden. I saw Yancey's and Pete's garden. They sent me a picture of their garden. It looks like a prison. Because <laughs> they got like foxes and bunnies that, you know, go in there and eat the stuff. So I guess they built like this prison cage around their garden to protect it. I'm like, man, them, them, them tomatoes are doing five to ten. <laughs> They're locked up. I said, man, that looks like a lot of work. But if you want to grow weeds, guess what? You ain't got to do nothing. Just, man, you just sit back, get you some lemonade, some iced tea, and in a couple of weeks, you have weeds there. And you're like, I didn't even plant them. How do they come? Man, they just pop out of anywhere. Because they're weeds. And that's like our flesh. You ain't got to tell your flesh to sin. It's in our innate nature. See, you got to dig it out. You got to get rid of the sin. You got to decrease so that Christ may increase in your life. Because sin will want to just happen naturally. But if you want to live for God, that's the struggle. That's where you're going to have to fight. That's where you're going to have to go into spiritual warfare. That's where you're going to have to go into battle. And you're going to have to push this flesh down day in and day out. Because sin is going to want to creep up. And you ain't got to do anything. That's why as children, I never had to sit down and say, Nehemiah, this is how you lie. I never had to teach them that. Why? It's in their nature. Did you eat the cake? He's got chocolate all over him. No, puppy. <laughs> I didn't touch it. <laughs> And he's got cake everywhere. How many of you had to teach your children to lie? Man, some of them are good at it too, ain't they? They lie with smiles on their faces. <laughs> you ain't got to teach them those things because it's in their nature. You ain't got to teach them how to be bad. It's in their nature. You ain't got to teach them as teenagers how to sneak out of the house. <laughs> Amen. Y'all acting like you never snuck out. Come on now. I know I asked some of your mamas. They were like, yeah, they snuck out, but they got beatings when they got home. <laughs> the spirit told me they snuck out, so I just waited for them to come back. As soon as they came in the door, wham! <laughs> You're like, you never do that again. You ain't got to teach them those things. They do it on their own. Why? Because it's already built in their DNA, their nature. But you do got to teach them the Word of God. It's not in them naturally. 
You got to teach them the Word of God. You got to teach them how to live a godly life. You got to teach them the importance of coming to church. You got to teach them how to give to the Lord faithfully. You got to teach them how to live for God a holy life. You got to teach them to listen to the Holy Spirit. You got to teach them how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You got to teach them how to prophesy. You got to put your arms around them and say, son, daughter, this is how you do it. This is how it's done. This is how our family lives. We don't live like other families. We don't do things other families do. We serve God and we put church as priority. And we want to teach you the ways of the Lord so that when you grow up, you will not depart from it. That's why the Bible says, teach your children the ways of the Lord so when they grow old. They will not depart. But you got to teach them. This is not self-taught things. You got to teach them. That's why it's important you serve God. If you're a man, don't send your children to church and you stay home. You come with them and teach them. Teach your daughter what it is to have a godly man and how they should be treated. Or else they're going to just... Settle for any old thing. And then you're going to be upset. And then it's too late. Teach them what it is to do the things according to the word of God. I'm going to ask worship team to come forward. We'll continue next Sunday. But we're going to get into the anointing part and the flow of the Spirit. I'm going to ask you all to stand up. We can't allow our impulses to control us. Our flesh has to die. And it's important that our young people know this, our children know this. Just want you to close your eyes with me this afternoon. Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised, God. There is none like you, Jesus. There is none like you, Holy Spirit. We honor you today. Have your way. Have your way. We want to die to sin. We want to die to sin. I'm going to ask the tribe to come forward. Everyone who's part of the tribe, come forward. These are our prayer warriors. Our interceders. Jesus. Now before we pray for anyone else, healings or deliverances or whatever. I'm going to do something different. Because I believe that we need to pour into our young people. And we need to invest in them. And teach them the ways of the Lord. And impart into them what God has imparted into us. And that they be filled with the Spirit. That they speak in other tongues. They prophesy. They cast out evil spirits. Because they serve the same God we serve. And I believe our young people need to experience it. 
and know that God is real. And what I'm going to ask is every young person, we're going to start with 11 and up. Even you guys in the booth, just let, just let it roll. Just put it on the widescreen and just let it roll for now. I'm going to ask you to come up and find someone here. And we're going to pray for them. And we're going to believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit for them. Ask them the question, have you ever spoken in tongues? If they say no, then say, hey, we're going to pray and believe. Have you ever prophesied before? No? Okay, we're going to pray and believe that you do that starting today. So every young person, 11 years old and up, don't be afraid. All my tribe, just get right here because I need you to pray with them. All the young people, come on, just stand. Get with somebody here. Get with somebody up here. And if there's more of you than our people, then just wait your your moment here. But I want you to ask them that questions. Have you ever spoken tongues? If they say no, then you're going to pray for them and believe in it. Have they ever prophesied? No? Then pray for them. And we're going to believe in faith that God's going to do. And then we're going to pray for the rest of you. But there's going to be an explosion. We're going to believe for our young people because the enemy is after them. So young people, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. If you're not being prayed for, just, just stay here praying, and they're going to get to you. We're going to believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to believe in the speaking of tongues. We're going to believe in the proph- prophecy. We're going to pray for our young people. They are under such attack. Shira Yasanda. If you're online and you're a young person, just type in there, young person. Type in the word young person. And I'll pray for you online. Just type in the word young person. And if young people, you're praying, believe in faith. Believe in faith. Believe in faith that you're going to receive the gifts of the Spirit. Believe in faith. This year is going to be different for you. Believe in faith. God is going to do a miracle in you. God is going to do a miracle in you. You open up your mouth in faith and begin to speak. You begin to speak. You begin to speak. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The rest of you, we're going to pray for you in a moment. Just allow us this moment with our young people. The enemy is coming after them so hard with so many things. You need deliverance, young person. They'll pray for you for deliverance, salvation, and then baptism and the flow of the Spirit. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Come on, come on. We pray against darkness. We pray against darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. Dark images.
dark images, shadowy figures. Shadowy figures, we come against that in Jesus' name. We believe in healings and deliverances for our young people. Jesus. If you're a young person and you're experiencing like a darkness in your room, shadowy figures, you feel like there's something in your room, you feel like a presence come in, I want to pray with you personally, because God wants to do a miracle in your life. If that's you, just meet me right here, I want to pray with you, because it's going to be... God's going to do a miracle in you. God is going to do a miracle in you. You're going to be set free in Jesus' name. You're going to be set free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you're going to be set free. Father, right now, we come against any presence that is in his room, Lord. Any presence that is coming to bring fear into his room, Father God. And we pray right now by the blood of Jesus Christ that that will be broken right now. That will be broken right now. God, every door will be shut right now, Father God. Every door will be shut right now in Jesus name we pray for freedom right now every spirit that is trying to enter into that room let it be thrown out as we cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ every doorpost in his room we cover it with the blood of Jesus Christ right now Father God oh we pray, Holy Spirit, intervene right now. Bring in peace into his room, Father God. Bring peace into his room, Father God. We pray for his mind right now, Lord. Give him rest, Father God. Give him peace, Father God. We pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would cast out any, any dark shadows Father God, that is coming up against him right now, Father. Right now in Jesus' name. We pray for freedom right now. Freedom, Lord Jesus. Freedom, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Holy Spirit, fill him right now. Fill him up with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Fill him up, Father God. Fill him up, Lord Jesus. Fill him up right now with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Father God. Let him speak, Lord, in other tongues, Lord Jesus. Let him feel, Lord Jesus, the presence of the Spirit right now, right now. Just begin to thank the Lord. Open up your mouth and just say, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. And allow God to fill up your mouth. Say, Lord, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Say that to the Lord nice and loud. I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now. I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now. I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now. Feel him, Lord. Feel him, Lord. Feel him right now. Feel him right now. Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name we cover him with the blood of Jesus fill him fill him Lord fill him right now from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet God fill him with the fire of the baptism it's like in Acts chapter 2 tongues of fire 
sat upon them, Father. Rest the tongues of fire upon him. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray right now. No more fear. No more fear. No more fear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Is there anybody else of young people that feels the shadows in their rooms? That feels shadows in their rooms. Darkness, a presence comes in. Father, right now we pray for these grandkids, Lord, that are feeling presences in their room. We pray that you cover their room with the blood of Jesus Christ. Cover them right now, Father God. Cover them right now in Jesus' name. Cover them, Father God. Every attack of the enemy, we come against it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we come against them and we set them free, Father God. Let the house be removed from any witchcraft, Father God. Any witchcraft that has been allowed in that house, we break it off of it right now. We close doors, Lord Jesus, and we pray right now, fire of a living God, fall fresh, fall fresh. Fall fresh upon him. Fall fresh upon them, Father God. Fall fresh right now. Right now. Receive. Receive freedom. 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 We blow on them the freedom of God. The freedom of God right now. Right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Right now. Fire of a living God. Baptize them right now, Lord Jesus. Baptize them right now. Baptize them right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you. Hallelujah. Now, anybody else who needs prayer, come on. Anybody else who needs prayer, just come on up. Come on up. Come on up. You want baptism? You want salvation? Come, 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 come. Father, right now in Jesus' name, we pray for this grandchild, Father God. We pray right now in Jesus' name. Fill him up, Father God. Protect him, Lord Jesus. Protect him, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Father, right now. Right now, breakthrough, Holy 
Spirit. Break through, Holy Spirit. Break through, Holy Spirit. Break through, Holy Spirit. Break through right now, right now, right now. Fire, fire, fire. Father God, the baptism. dimension, a new revelation, Father God, a new revelation of the Spirit right here, right now, Father God. Open up those doors, Lord Jesus. Open them up, Father, right now, Father. We thank you. We worship you. We honor you. Anybody else? Father, we just pray. Bless him, Father God. Cover him with the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the fire of the living God be upon him right now, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. Use him. Fill him up. Fill him up. Allow him to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Baptism of the Holy Spirit, fill him up with fire. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Anybody else? Come, come, come. for Mendoza, Father God, in Jesus' name. The anointing of the Spirit of the Lord be upon her. Father, right now, give her the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We pray for fire, fire, fire to fall upon her. In Jesus' mighty name, where she's at, that she senses the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If there's anybody else, we want to pray with you.
tongues of fire right now. Right now. Right now. Let it fall fresh. Holy Spirit, right now. Right now. As it's falling, it's breaking. As it's falling, it's breaking down. It's breaking down the attacks of the enemy. Receive it right now. Just release it out. Release it out now. Release it out. Release it out. Release it out. Release it. Release it. Freedom is in your release. Freedom is in your release. Freedom is in your release. Freedom is in your release right now. Right now. Right now. Freedom. Let it out. 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 There's a word in you. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Come on. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. There it is. There it is. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Fire. 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 Come on. Come on. Just receive. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. Jesus. Jesus. There it is. There it is. Let it out. Let it out. Just let it flow. Let it flow. Completely. Flow. 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 Flow like mighty rivers of water. Flow out. Flow out. Come on, come on. Flow more. Flow. Release. Release. Open the gates. Open the gates. Release. Release. Release fully right now. Release it. Release it. Baptism. Full, fall fresh like Acts 2. Tongues of fire. 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 Right there, right there, right there, right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There it is. Just let it flow. Let it out. Let it out. Let it out. There's freedom there. There's freedom there. There's healing there. There's healing. There's healing there. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Let it all out. Let it all out. Release, 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 release. Release. Release it. Jesus. Release. Ura Yashan. Come on. Come on. Ura Yashira Yasha. Come on. Come on. Just let it all out. Let it all out. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit right there. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit right there. Ura Yashara Yasi. fellowship in the welcome center just allow the people to continue to pray we love you guys we'll see you in jesus name love you